Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning, I'll be reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9. I'm going to be reading verses 1 and 2, and then I'm going to jump over to verse 37. This is what it says. Jesus called the twelve apostles together and gave them power and authority over all demons and the ability to heal sicknesses. He sent the apostles out to tell about God's kingdom and to heal the sick. And then starting at verse 37. The next day, when they came down from the mountain, a large crowd met Jesus. A man in the crowd shouted to him, Teacher, please come and look at my son, because he is my only child. An evil spirit seizes my son, and suddenly he screams. It causes him to lose control of himself and foam at the mouth. The evil spirit keeps on hurting him and almost never leaves him. I begged your followers to force the evil spirit out, but they could not do it. Jesus answered, You people have no faith, and your lives are all wrong. How long must I stay with you and put up with you? Bring your son here. While the boy was coming, the demon threw him on the ground and made him lose control of himself. But Jesus gave a strong command to the evil spirit and healed the boy and gave him back to his father. All the people were amazed at the great power of God. Let us pray. Jesus, may this be a day that we're amazed at your great power, that we witness your great power, and that we respond to your great power. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Read a story about a L.A. cab driver that was going on vacation in New York. He saw the sights, he saw the shows, and um, What he enjoyed most about his vacation was getting to know some of the New York cab drivers, swapping stories with them about the differences and similarities between driving a cab in in L.A. and driving a cab in New York. Well, on the way back to the airport, New York cabbie began to to tell him a riddle. He said, I've got a riddle for you. He said, but you have to listen really closely in order to get it. He said, okay. He said, my mother and father had a child. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. Who is it? Well, the L.A. cabbie thought about it for a little while, and he said, I don't know. He said, it's me. Get it? It's me. Get it? He goes, yeah, I get it. He said, that's that's a good one. Well, he got back to L.A., and his friends were asking, well, how was it visiting New York? He said, oh, it was great. I got to see the sights. I got to see the shows. But the thing I enjoyed most were the New York cab drivers. We talked a lot about things they did in New York. They were the same as here and things that were different and some of their fares and things like that. He said, but one of them told me a riddle, and I'll I'll tell it to you, but you've got to listen really closely in order to get it. They said, okay. He said, my mother and father had a child. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. Who is it? And I said, well, I don't know. He said, it's the New York cab driver. Get it? It's the New York cab driver. Well, you know, sometimes folks say they get it, and they don't really get it. Not at all. The text we read this morning, Jesus has just given his disciples power 
We read it in verses 1 and 2. Power and authority over all demons and the ability to heal sicknesses. And then in verse 37, what is it? It's a story how they lacked power. The power that Jesus had just given them. Well, power is, is, a, is a theme that, that runs from the beginning to the end of the Gospel of Luke. And Luke is hoping, hoping that you and I get it because it's that, that, that Greek word, power, that he wants to make sure that we get. Dynamis. It's where we get the, the word for, for dynamite. It's where we get the word for dynamic. It's not a little bit of power. It's explosive power. And it's, it's hoping that, that, we, that we get it. In chapter 1, it's Mary that's given the power, the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is what it says in 135. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. In chapter 4, Jesus return, it says, Jesus returned to Galilee in power. Again in chapter 4, they were listening, and they said, What message is this? For with power and authority he commands demons, and they come come out. Chapter 5 says, and the power of the Lord was present for him to perform healing. And here in chapter 9, he gives that same power, that same authority to his disciples. And Luke wants to make so sure that, that you and I get it, Jesus' very last words in the entire gospel of Jesus. The very last words of Jesus are, you must stay in Jerusalem until you're clothed with power, power from on high. Well, right here in chapter 9, Luke is presenting a, a literary device called clausio or bracketing, where on either side that's why I started in verses 1 and 2 and ended up in verse 43. On, on, on either side, they, they talk about the same word, this word power. And it's everything that comes between them has to do with that theme of power. Because Luke wants to make sure that, that you and I get it. That you and I get it. So what's going on in chapter 9 that, that Luke wants to make sure that you and I get? Well, that's what I want to talk about this morning. That the gospel, the gospel wants to make sure that you and I get it. That Jesus has the power to redeem things. So Luke tells that story. Jesus and his disciples. There in chapter 9, they've, they've been sharing the the good news of the kingdom of God and how, how God's kingdom comes in power. They've been healing people. And as soon as they go from there, they go into the wilderness in order to pray. Well, 5,000 people follow them into the wilderness. And Jesus wants to make sure that they know that they have this power, not just in the cities, but it's, it's, it's off, away from the cities. And so Jesus turns to them and says, you give them something to eat. Well, the disciples say, all we have is five loaves and, and two fish. We don't have near enough to give them something to eat. And that's when Jesus takes the loaves, the fish. He turns to heaven, he blesses them, and he feeds 5,000 with five loaves and two fish, and there are 12 baskets left over. Jesus Christ has the power to redeem things, to redeem Something as common as a loaf of bread. Something as common as a fish. Moses, when God called him from, from the burning bush to, to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go, Moses said, whoa, 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 I don't have power to do that. I, I don't talk so good. And the first question that God asks Moses is, what is that in your hand? Well, it was his walking staff. And if you know the story, you know that God used that that simple thing, a walking stick, to be a part of, of the setting free of Israel from the hand of Pharaoh. He used it to part the waters of the Red Sea. He used it to, to strike the rock, to produce the water. That God 
through Jesus Christ, has the power to redeem things, ordinary things like, well, bread, like fish, like a common walking stick. Years ago, there was a young man in my church that I got to know pretty well. He was, I was about to say he was a good golfer. He was an incredible golfer. He was in the top 28 amateurs in the world. Well, he played golf for Georgia Tech, but he wasn't just on the team. He was the number one golfer for Georgia Tech. But not only that, he won the Bobby Dodd Award as the best athlete on campus at Georgia Tech. He was an incredible golfer. Well, his senior year, he was going into the ACC tournament, and they asked James to give the devotion that morning for the golfers, the caddies, the coaches, and everyone there at breakfast. He sent me a text that morning, and he said, Pastor Tom, pray for me this morning. I have an opportunity to reach some goals and give glory to God. James White knew then, and he knows now, that golf wasn't the most important thing in his life. Giving glory to God was, and using a golf ball to do it, It was one of those common things that God could redeem to give glory to Him. What is that in your hand? Can you use it to give glory to God? It might be that iPad that is sucking away great amounts of time. Will you allow Jesus to redeem it, to use that iPad to reach out, maybe to folks that don't know that they matter to God and that they matter to you as well? What is that that's in your hand? Is it something common? Maybe an iPhone. Something common, something ordinary that God can use to give glory to Him, to reach out, to let people know that they matter to God and that they matter to you as well. What is that in your hand? Jesus Christ, He redeems things. It might be, well, it might be a wallet that you've been using to to spend great sums of money on yourself. And now it's it's a time to give glory to God and and use it to be redeemed for, for God's purposes, to be used in power. Maybe it's a purse. Maybe it's a checkbook. God uses ordinary and everyday things for His purposes. Jesus Christ redeems things. Yes, sometimes fish, sometimes bread, sometimes a walking staff, sometimes a golf ball, sometimes the very things that are in your hands. That was the first thing that I want to talk about. Jesus Christ has power to redeem things. Second thing that I want to talk about this morning is the second story that goes on here in chapter 9. Jesus takes with him Peter, James, and John. They go up on a mountain to pray. And while Jesus is praying, that Peter, James, and John fall asleep during the prayer. Well, when they wake up, Jesus is sitting there with Moses and Elijah. And he's talking to them about his crucifixion and resurrection. Well, Jesus... Jesus uses the crucifixion and the resurrection to usher in a kingdom, a kingdom of power. And this is the kingdom of power that Luke talks about again and again and again. And he's gathered there with Moses and Elijah. Well, that might not be such a big deal, except that Moses has been dead for 1,200 years and Elijah has been dead for 850 years. That through his crucifixion and resurrection, Jesus redeems the past. He redeems all of history through the crucifixion and resurrection. And he he ushers in a a new kingdom, a new time, a new start, a fresh beginning of, of power. Of power. Dr. Philip Zimbardo, in his book Time Paradox, talks about research that he has done. And what he discovered in his research is that the attitude towards the past affects the present and the future. That's what he's talking about, a time paradox. That the past and our attitude toward it affects the time in the present and the time in the future. That it's not just what happened to us or not just what we did, it's our attitude toward it. 
that there are even those who, who went through the Holocaust that are able to look back on their past and see it in a strong positive light that it made a difference. It gave them hope in their present and in their future. But those who have a strong negative attitude toward their past, this is what his research t- discovered that those who have a strong negative attitude toward their past are more aggressive, more anxious, they're less conscientious, less considerate, they're more depressed, they are less energetic, they're less friendly, less happy, they lie more often, steal more often, lose their temper more often than people with a highly positive attitude toward their past. You and I are in a hard time right now. And if we don't let Jesus redeem this hard time, it will destroy our present and it will destroy our future. Jesus Christ has has power to redeem the past for you and for me to take what's, what's going on with this horrible pandemic and use it as an opportunity to trust Him, an opportunity to lean on Him. An opportunity to to lean into relationships with family, with neighbor, with a stranger. That he redeems the past. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He who knew no sin became sin in order that we might be made right with God. Well, what what does that mean? that he became sin. It means he took your past and mine. All those things that that we might be harboring guilt for. All those things that might be regrets. All those things we might, maybe that we did or maybe that were done to us that we were harboring shame for. And he takes the, and he nails it to the cross in order to, to kill those things that would destroy us. The guilt, the shame, the sin. All those things that would destroy us, he nailed it to the cross in order to kill them once and for all to take away their power. And on the third day when he rose from the grave, he gave that power to you and to me to redeem the past. My hope this morning is that you get it, is that you get it. Jesus has power to redeem the past for you and for me. He does it through the cross and the resurrection. Well, this morning I came to talk that Jesus has power to redeem things. He has power to redeem the past. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning is that he has power to redeem people. There are three stories right here in chapter 9. The first, yes, it was the feeding of the 5,000. The second was there Jesus praying with Moses and Elijah where Peter, James, and John were witness. But the third thing was the story that we read this morning. This boy who seemed to be beyond all hope. That an evil spirit would would throw him on the ground. And even the disciples, the power that was given to them, they they didn't get it. And they were unable to, to heal the boy. But Jesus steps in. And with his power, he heals the boy and returns him to his his father. Jesus has power to redeem people. That no life is beyond the power of Jesus Christ. This morning, I don't know what you've done. I don't know where you've been and I don't know where you are now. But I do know that no one is too far gone. I do know that no one is forever ruined. What 1 Peter 3.18 says, As Christ died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust once for all not he didn't die just for some or just die for a few who 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 got it at that moment Jesus died for sins once for all the just for the unjust in order that he might bring us to God 
having been put to death in the flesh but made alive in the Spirit. He has power that you and I don't have, power to bring us to God. We don't have that power on our own to redeem ourselves. But He's the one that has the power to redeem us, to bring us to God. This morning, I hope is that you get it, that you allow Him to love you, that you allow Him to forgive you, that you allow Him to cleanse your heart and make His home there. And I don't know if you've ever done that before. There's no, no really magic words to say, but what it does require is that we allow Him, that we invite Him in. And I want to do that in prayer with you right now. Pray with me. Jesus, use this time, this day, and this prayer that you might redeem redeem those of us that are that are here before you and we allow you to to love us and then we begin to love you and that our lives begin to to be re- redeemed changed made new and that we allow you to forgive us it's not just a few of us that need that forgiveness it, well it's all of us and that you've Cleanse our hearts and you make your home there. Lord, our greatest need is you and that redeeming power. It's not just in an old book, but your kingdom. It's loose in the world today. And may we get it. Get that power, that power that you use to redeem people power that you use to redeem the past and that power you use to redeem to redeem things it's in Christ's name we pray amen thanks again for joining us today Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. And we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.